You're listening to The Kylo Show, the podcast where we talk about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. And it starts right now. Hello and welcome to The Kylo Show. We're here today with a <laughs> bunch of fun, basically, oh, yeah. is what's going to be Let's happening. Go. Y'all are the fun. Y'all um, are the fun. Yeah. See, <laughs> if you're listening, you've already <laughs> picking up that there's we're missing something. We're missing some male voices. Yeah. Mm. It's just the ladies in the house yeah. today. So um, obviously last week's episode, my mom and I talked about uh, women and we're just going to continue that. So we mm-hmm. brought in some of our favorite people totally. that are ladies. Mm-hmm. So powerful. Ruth, they powerful are powerful ladies. Ruthie Ridley, Becky Johnson are here with us today. Oh. Super. Exciting. I'm still, I don't know how I end up on this show. I'm telling you, I'm with the powerhouses of powerhouses uh. right here. Sitting next to Becky and Sherry, like oh what? God. Right across the table. Let's go. Yep. Let's do this. It's going to be fun. Um, so for people that may not know who you are, what you do, can you give them a little uh, bio? Yeah, I was a full-time nurse for about 17 years. And then I turned into a full-time content creator mm-hmm. in the chaos of 2020. Mm-hmm. Very like crazy, controversial time. I'm a woman of color married to a white cop. What? So there was a lot of... Um, <laughs> and you're a Christian. And I'm a believer. <laughs> so there was a lot of attention on my page because I was saying things that normal people, like people weren't talking about. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm a content creator, like influencer, mm-hmm. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. I mean, we I all dream fashion. of being like you. No, I just want to look at your closet. I just yes. want to go in and Yeah, I call Ruthie when I need there. an outfit. No, <laughs> it's not that great. I actually, yeah. It's not that great. Whatever. No, I need the more space. The Kylo never looks so good, guys. Yeah. 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 Star never looks unit. so good. Just for, I do. As a closet. I do. Yeah. Our kids are actually... All best friends too. They are. They are all best friends. In fact, we're we're planning a birthday party for my 13 year old. And she's like, top of the list. Addie has to make it. (laughs) If she can't make it, we're changing the date. So (laughs) that's how it goes. And Judah has already planned his 11th birth, 12th birthday. In March? Yeah. In February. February. It's in Tahoe and both your kids have to come. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, That's how this goes. Okay. Well, you know, love it. Love you. Love you. So happy you're here. All right, Becky, your turn. Uh, yeah, my name is Becky Johnson. I'm the executive pastor mm-hmm. of a church called Jesus Culture, Sacramento. Which means you do everything. Which means <laughs> what, it, what is executive pastoring? It's all of it. It's all of it that nobody else wants to do. I was the youth pastor for eight years, and I've been the executive pastor for um, the last 18 months, so coming up on two years. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been with Jesus Culture uh, for the last 12 years of yeah. my life, <laughs> married um, to our worship pastor. So... If anyone knows org charts, I'm the executive pastor. He's the worship pastor. Mm-hmm. Just let that sink in. It's fine. <laughs> we never have any arguments about it. It doesn't cause any tension being my husband's boss. It's fine. Oh we listen gosh. to um, every marriage resource that Kylo puts out. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> org chart mm-hmm. madness. That mm-hmm. should be the name of an episode. What happens? You know, we have a little like? bit of that going on here. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand I know. Just a little bit. Just a little. What are you talking both, about? You both have three kids each. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm in the other season. So Ruby's yes. in the fun, you know, like teenager mm-hmm. season. I have a two, five, and 10 year old. And so I also travel and preach, and I have three kids, and I work full time. Mm-hmm. And Let's just pray for you, right? Yeah. Now. Yeah. That's the Lord, what this is Jesus about comes. right now. Yeah. Jesus comes. The, when I see people with older kids, I'm like, I know it's exhausting in a different way. We talk about, totally. well, you know, that's emotionally exhausting. I'm physically exhausted, but it's, my husband and I will look at families with older kids and we're like, there's the light. Like we're com- like we're coming. <laughs> Everyone's going to get in the car by themselves yeah, someday. Yes. My mom totally. used to say to me, honey, in a few years, it's going to get easier. Oh. And I'm, I'm like, mom, you say that every year. <laughs> she goes, well, you keep having more children. <laughs> oh, that's true. So that's I remember true. when they could all get in the car and buckle up. Like, oh, wow. Such a big deal. Yeah. Isn't it easy? That's going to be good <laughs> one day. Yeah. And I've just entered in the adult parenting season. Oh, yeah. Because I saw eight children. Oh 18, 18, 18 and out of the house. Oh, my word. She's at retreat Brace right now yourself. for BSSM. It's so great. She's she's calling me, Becky, telling me testimonies. Mm. That's what she's calling oh, me I love about this. people getting healed. She got her prayer language she didn't have, which is amazing. I guess she's I missed that one. all kinds of fun friends. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. It's super fun. Lots of fun. So, anyways, but we're going to dive into. Um, just all that it means to be a woman. We talked about that in the last episode. 
and having you guys on. We just wanted to have a conversation around being a wife, around being a mother, being a sister. What does that look like? Being a friend. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause there's a lot, there's a lot of talk about what is a woman Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um, what's the goodness of being a woman and a woman that is um, a Christian, a woman that's living her life with purpose and knows her identity in Mm -hmm. Christ and then putting that on display in all those areas. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of the topic and what we're really going after. And Mm -hmm. we picked you two on purpose. We did. We did. I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn from Ruth here right learn now. Too. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So, um, yeah, we're just going to have conversations. We'll, this is not interrogation. We'll answer the questions too, so don't feel. Okay. Don't feel <laughs> you'll, like, some, you'll air some dirty laundry. We will. Okay. I'm, okay. If you we're listen, not on our own it's always, here. always dirty laundry. So. <laughs> okay, good. But so do you want to lead in the laundry. questions, Mom? Yeah. Uh, this is fun. Thanks. Um, I, I love... Um, inspiring women to be themselves and Mm -hmm. dream and and i've i've taught and mentored young women but one of the things that always comes up is do i stay at home or do i work Mm. (laughs) do i you know and and i always one of the things i always say i i think nowadays you can have you can have it all you might not be able to have it all at once right so um you know i i think we dream about being a wife someday and a mom and all these things. And uh, I guess one of the questions would be, when you thought about getting married and you thought about being a wife and a mom, and then you got actually <laughs> you got, got all married, that you wished for, you got everything you dreamt <laughs> of. Uh, what was one of the things that were like kind of stood out as a shock? Expectations or, versus reality. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I love those uh, on Instagram. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh! Well, I um, for me, I have I had an interesting journey into motherhood. I really had to <laughs> surrender to it. Um, in that, I, I so I spent most of my adolescence like I never, you know, my friends were like stuffing pillows in their nightgowns, pretending they were carrying babies and having <laughs> baby dolls. I never was really drawn to to baby dolls mm-hmm. or to to motherhood. And so when I got married, I. Um, I thought I'm not going to have kids. I just thought I'm going to get married. I want to be a career woman. I want to, you know, be untethered. And I really believed that that was what my life was going to look like. What I didn't realize is the journey for me was going on an inner healing journey of um, that is not, that wasn't coming from a healthy place. That was Mm. coming from pain. That Mm. was coming from a reaction. That was coming from fear. And so I actually had... Um, a really crazy encounter with the Lord when I was 21. I had two dreams back to back where two, I don't know how charismatic this podcast is, two two extremely prophetic Bob Jones and Mm -hmm. Lou Engle, two men I had never met, but were prophets of the house that I was at when we were at Mm -hmm. Bethel. I had a dream where Bob Jones and uh, came to me in a dream and asked me where my children were. And in the dream, I but I got to my, I like fell to my knees when he said, where are your children? And I started crying. And he said, in the dream, you're scared. You're scared to have kids and kind of went on this whole thing and pretty much in the dream laid out why I was afraid. Oh, wow. I woke up in a cold sweat and this has, ne- that had never happened to me and has never since happened mm-hmm. to me. And I woke up and I woke my husband up. We were just married. We were married for less than two years. He knew I did not want children. And I said, I think I want kids. Oh my God. So it was like immediate heart work. Next night, had a dream where Lou Engle, kind of the same thing, asked me about mm-hmm. my son. And um, it turned my life around into, I, okay, I'm going to have kids. But now I have to reconcile how am I going to have kids and not stay home? Because mm-hmm. I do want yeah. to work mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. had this in my heart. And so it's been a wild, journey. wild journey of what, you know, and then dealing with the expectations in a Christian world. I was raised by yeah. a single mom, mm-hmm. by a working mom. I had never experienced an expectation of women staying home until I became a Christian. I got saved when I was 18 and got into the church. And then it was like, oh, you shouldn't work. That isn't, you know, that's not the best for your kids. That's Mm -hmm. not the, that's not what God's called you to do. And so here I am in a church context going, I would like to run something. (laughs) Yeah. Because I've always thought it. I saw my mom run things our our whole life. And she raised us, you're going to run things. Mm -hmm. And then in the church, they're like, oh, well, women don't really run things. Unless it's children's ministry. Unless it's children's ministry. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want, I don't even know if I want my own kids. (laughs) I don't want want crackers. (laughs) Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, That's great. And that, 
you touched on something about women sometimes don't encourage each other, mm. which is we talk about sisterhood yeah. later, but it's like, hey, you sh- instead of, you know, running alongside somebody's dream and cheering them on, we kind of like look over and like, you're different than me, so yeah. let me judge your skin off kind yeah. of thing. Right. But, Sherry, you were actually one of the first women that I encountered. Um, I was You were running first year BSSM when mm-hmm. I was doing first year, you and a woman named Tracy Cooper. Yeah. And it was, um, I hadn't been a Christian long, but it was some of the only examples of women leading in a church, mm. not wow. doing children's ministry. Mm-hmm. And you would, both of you would get up frequently and release women and empower women and speak to the different callings. Hey, if you're called to stay home, wonderful. But mm-hmm. if you're feeling called to do both. And it was some of the first uh, voices that I experienced and then really followed and clung to. And you have been a huge encouragement, you know, personally and from afar that wanting both is not wrong. (laughs) And God designed me that way. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. How about you, Ruthie? Oh, man. You know, I watched that movie, Cheaper by the Dozen. Yeah. (laughs) And I really did want 12 kids. And then I had my first child yeah. and I was like, okay, I had so much anxiety. I didn't expect to have so much anxiety. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, when that kid was awake and it was daytime, my husband basically took care of the kid and did, this is Ava, did everything for her, which kind of explains why they're so close now. They're, so, yeah. so, they're close. so close. I mean, he did everything except for nurse her. And, um, cause he could. So I, I would think, yeah, cause he couldn't. You can't. Because could. yeah. if he would, he, you know, and then that was it. He didn't help me in the nights after that with his babies or whatever. But I think that was kind of the biggest shock is like, I, I just didn't feel prepared for motherhood. Mm. Like Becky, I wasn't really playing with dolls and pretending to have kids. I just kind of decided after Ben and I got together, oh, we're going to have a lot of kids, you know? (laughs) And then I was like, wait a minute, they cost so much money. (laughs) My mom is buying their diapers, paying for formula, you know, doing all this stuff. Car so, seats. Car oh, seats. She was paying gear. for everything. And I'm like, we can't even afford to be parents. Like, ooh, I mean, this is a joke. So that's the simple end of <laughs> it. Expectations and versus reality. Totally. Yes. yes. Totally. And then now I actually expected to be superwoman and be able to be everywhere at every mm. moment of every day for my kids. And my kids are now 11, almost 13 and 13, going to be 14. And it's the first time I'm asking for help. And that was an expectation. I really didn't say, I thought I could do it all, honestly. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds crazy, yeah. but it's really humbling to say, can you get my kid for me? I hate it. I really mm-hmm. do. And it is the life we chose. I would pick up your kid for you, Ruby. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I think I, we need to stick Thank together. You. Thank you. So an expectation was for me too, yeah. Yeah, that was that would, I could do it all. And this is the first year, because I got a high schooler now in a different school, that I have to ask for help. And I don't love it, but it's good for me. Yeah, that's good. Asking for help is important. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. it is. Yes. Yeah. I expected my kids to, to, um, oh gosh, it's going to sound so bad. Sorry, be well behaved. <laughs> no, I expected them to, <laughs> they, well, I, I expected them to halt me. Oh. I knew, oh, I, yeah, like, I, I felt could like see that. I'm going to have kids and, and everything is going to stop in my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've, my, my reality has been, oh, by the grace of God and a very good husband, my kids have empowered me. Mm-hmm. So they've slowed me down, and I think sure. that we need to be honest about that. You think they that. slowed you down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do yes. have to slow down. You got to slow down, right? But so I think, Becky's amazing, you guys. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that real quick because. But I thought is. these. This yeah. is going to. This is going to end me. Like this or, is hinder yeah. you from oh, actually yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Yeah, and I, my reality has been. Oh, I, you know, I tell people, I think favor and growth and promotion opened up to me because I became a mom. And when I see women go, I want a career, so I'm not going to have kids. I think, oh gosh, don't you know, like you won't, you know, you'll be so much fuller Mm -hmm. and more well-rounded as a person. (laughs) That kids actually bring an invitation to understanding who the father is in a way that we can't do without them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it tenderizes our heart. It's it, We actually, I think we become better daughters mm-hmm. for the Lord because yeah. we have a child. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, this unconditional love, this heartache that happens when they make painful exchanges. I mean, to we learn connection a different way when we have kids than, when, than when we don't have them. And That's, you become a lot less selfish. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
I always see the, the most selfish true. young couples so I see true. I go, oh, you you don't need a dog. You need a child. Yes. <laughs> you yes. need a child yes. in your seriously. life. Seriously. Yeah. The dog is nothing. <laughs> you can put There's a dog a in a kennel. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and then you have families that have one kid. And you're like, oh, you need two yeah. kids. <laughs> you're not yeah. outnumbered yet. Yeah. 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 You're not outnumbered. Um, That's, yeah. funny. That's funny. <laughs> what about for with your husbands? Like we talked about your kids, but what expectations uh, versus reality happens with when you be had a husband? I mean, I'll I'll say I was young and naive when we got married. I was 18. You were young. I so young. Confirm that. And I was pretty sure that every night we would go to bed and we would cuddle and fall asleep in each other's arms. And it would mm. be like every movie I ever saw. Yeah. Leading up until that moment. Yeah. And, and that I'd wake up and there wouldn't be bad breath and mm-hmm. all the things. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought that I would enjoy that. <laughs> totally. And now... I enjoy when he can't touch me because I have enough space in the bed <laughs> and there's cold spots. Totally. Not that I, but I'm not a touch love language and that's not, no secret here. That's but, funny. but I remember thinking that I'm just going to long for this every single night. And we're nearly 20 years in. Next, this that, next month will be 20 years for us. Oh my Amazing. gosh. I long for Ben, but not to cuddle with me all night long. Yeah. Right. Oh yes, gosh. Yes. That did change as far as when I first got married versus now. But he's still my best friend, so yeah, that's I'm, good. I'm grateful for that. Expectations versus reality. I expected it to be mm-hmm. a lot easier than it is. I thought, like, the hard work is dating and pre-marrieds, and then you get married, and then it's like you're married forever. It's and like so, a sleepover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're like, best you know. Part. <laughs> and I, yeah, just consistently, I'm like, oh, just the other day, we kind of hit as, you know, we've just, we're 15 years in. Mm-hmm. I think you hit these milestones. And I'm like... Derek, we need to do some work. Like we just, <laughs> what is happening? You know, we need, I described it. I said, there's, we're building a different part of our house and we have the wrong tools. Like we need new tools. And I just didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. But you still need to keep working on yes, things. Yes, that yeah. how yeah. intentional you, you have to be mm-hmm. to stay like happy and healthy. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. thought the, the, the finish line is marriage. You know, mm-hmm. the finish line is the I do. For sure. Make the covenant and then it's good. And you know, I you cut realize, all night long. And yeah. You, you don't mind like, the bad breath in the morning. When we said I do, the gun went off for the longest marathon Seriously. of my life. <laughs> Seriously. It was not a finish line. It was not a finish line. <laughs> that and fun. that's been, yes, it's been harder than I thought, <laughs> but so rewarding, right? Yeah, yeah, for things. sure. Yes. For sure. You know, I people say all the time that, you know, communication is key mm-hmm. and you know, like what you see is what you get. You're not going to change that person. And I was actually pretty drawn to Ben because of how laid back he is and mm-hmm. how quiet he is. He's but I thought chill. over the years he would have more opinions. He would, you know, <laughs> get more excited with me. You, you thought know? you would rub off on him? Yes. <laughs> and he's, I said, did <laughs> you see like this? Me. Oh my gosh. The kids just, Jay just got promoted. That's amazing. You know, no, <laughs> and I, you know, it's just, I this want been to, happy. yeah, this that's been, been sad. sad. Yeah, he's exactly. English. He's English, he's English. So, and he's also, he's um, yeah, he's a nine on the Enneagram. Mm-hmm. He's just really a peacemaker and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's an expectation of like, maybe they'll become different. Like more like me, more like me, mm-hmm. like they'll, they'll get excited about things I'm excited about. And then communication. Yeah. You know, like that is just has been the biggest thing for him and I. Mm. And coming from a family, he's one of five kids mm-hmm. where you just don't talk about anything. They are yeah. English. And Brits. so it's like, yeah. oh, there's the rug. We're just going to, you know, Sweet. yeah, where's they, the rug? He just doesn't have the desire. It's like, why would you talk about that? Why do we yeah. have to go so deep? Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> making him crazy. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, can we just be uh. happy and and hug and, you know, and and another expectation I had because I grew up in a different kind of home where, um, you know, I have a Jamaican father. He's tough. Mm-hmm. And he did the best he could mm-hmm. with a dad who died when he was about 11 years old. Yeah. And so he became the dad of eight other siblings and, and did the best <sighs> yeah. mm-hmm. he could. But he was a tough one. Mm-hmm. And I didn't expect Ben to forgive me as quickly as he does. Mm-hmm. And um, that, that's that been cool for me. Yeah. He just... 
He's like, I don't even, okay, mm-hmm. like, why are you still talking about it? Let's yeah. keep going. <laughs> he doesn't like to dwell on things. He doesn't like mm-hmm. awkwardness. He doesn't like yeah. anything heavy. Wow. And so I expected him to, like, I, I felt like I was going to have to kind of earn back, mm-hmm. you know, because I mess up, you know, and I thought yeah. I'd have to, like, spend a lot of time earning back his love for me. And he's always been extremely, I mean, on my meanest, you know, those paragraphs <laughs> of just, you did, I, I, I can't believe you did that to me, you know, and the, you know, this is a Christian <laughs> podcast, but the things you say to your husband, you know, real rude, nasty. Yeah. And he <laughs> said to me, you know what? We're not going to do this right now. You yeah. know, I can't do this right now with you. Way to go, Ben, for this setting it to well, I will talk to you when we get, ah, you know, and here yeah. I go again. All the women I, listening, a- <laughs> send this clip to your husband who doesn't forgive you. <laughs> not on the- Literally. <laughs> This is a great point, though, because I'm I've been married. Next year will be forty years. Oh my god! And gosh. Um, Italy, we're coming for you. Just saying. Yes, that's our that's our dream. Yes. But um, you know, I would call this mature love. Where, and yeah. so even last weekend we were doing a conference, and Brittany was teaching, and she had a set of questions to, for table discussion, and one of them I think was where what areas do you feel stuck still. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, 40 years in almost, and we, we still have, because communication during a conflict is hard. But if after you've been doing it for years and years, you realize we're going to be connected on the other side of this right. conflict because right. we always are. Mm-hmm. Right. We're going to stay in the game and work it out. But I think when you're first married, every little problem is like, oh my gosh, no, you know, truly, truly. we just blew our life up. You mm-hmm. said what? You know, yes. I'm wounded forever. You know? yes. I'll Actually, I'll be again. saying yeah. that again to you later and you'll be wounded yeah. forever again. Right. Because, and, and I always, I love that I'm the best version of myself right now, but I'm not done yet. Mm-hmm. And I think everywhere you are in your life, even when in your early married years or parenting years, you're giving them the very best you have at that moment in yep. your journey. Yeah. Yep. And your journey's really not good. over. And so you're just con- continually get better and better and better at, at those things. And and then you, you know, we end up in a rocking chair on the on the porch. porch. Uh-huh. I don't care. You have no issues anymore. <laughs> right. I, I saw this. <laughs> Doesn't funny, matter. Yeah. This is maybe too, too much information. But I saw this funny little skit the other day of this guy, the first – few months he's married his wife's going to the bathroom and he doesn't even want to go in there it's just you know whatever he's disgusted <laughs> and then it says three years in or five years in and then pretty soon he's in there talking about um he's handing her toilet paper while they're talking about their budgets you know <laughs> yes that's <laughs> good so that's so true. Maybe uh-huh. a little gross but idea but it's just this it's the reality the things that mattered here won't matter here so in the middle just remember mm. we're gonna make it Yep. Mm-hmm. And get help. So good. Yeah. So Huge. good. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really good. I think the big thing, you know, and whether it's communication is your struggle or, you know, boundaries, whatever it is, it's the, I'm going to keep choosing you. Mm-hmm. You know, we all have, we're married to an opposite in one way or another, yes. if not extreme. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, I think that's the grace of God. He gave us someone that's so different than us, which is exactly what we needed mm-hmm. because it calms us down. It reminds us to to slow down. It reminds us to, I mean, that's what my Ben, we both have Ben's, Mm -hmm. but that's what Ben does for me is like, he keeps me connected to this, this moment, but also the future. Cause I'm stuck in the details right here. I, 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 I'm trying to plan this out so I can be successful. Right. Um, And I'm feisty and spicy. And so I'm always making messes and he's always saying, I'd love to have this conversation when your voice sounds like Mm -hmm. mine. Right. It's less now than it ever was before. So I'm growing. Yeah. Look at me maturing in my love. But it's that um, I'm going to keep choosing you. That's what makes marriage successful, right. is that regardless of all of this, at the end of the day, I'm going to keep choosing you. Totally. I'm going to keep choosing you, and I'm going to keep staying connected, and I'm going to keep growing myself in this process. I think that's one of the, the hardest things that I see today, which, Becky, you, you're in the youth world more than <laughs> I am, mm-hmm. but I we all have teenagers, so somehow I feel connected to it. <laughs> but I, I was just at... Um, Dallas upper room and speaking to a room full of Gen Z millennial mm. young people. And it was so much fun, but I'm looking out here and they, the statistics say that that generation doesn't seem to have a value for marriage mm-hmm. because they don't, 
they don't see it being displayed as valuable. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, bummer. So looking at our kids that are growing up Uh and this, how are you putting on display how Mm. valuable marriage is? Mm. How are you putting on display that this covenant is worth the investment? Because right now it's the hookup culture is easy because there's no attachment and I don't really know what we're fighting for. Yeah. Mm. So how do we, how do we help cultivate in our own homes so our girls have something different that they're promoting out there? Yeah. That's such a good question. Gosh. (laughs) <laughs> like, you go for it, honey. You know, I'm I'm just now entering into that kind of in that headspace as my daughter's ten. You know, coming into the preteen <clears throat> years, and um, we have found to be more. I was in a home where it was, you know, you don't talk to the kids about anything. Like, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so everything's whispers or behind closed doors or dealt with when we go to bed. But you felt the underlying tension of all the mm-hmm. all the moments, yeah. and so you know. I don't know if this is right or wrong. We'll know in 10, 20 years, right? right? Sure. Uh, when our kids are older. But we have just started to bring our bring our kids into the process with us. And mm-hmm. um, I don't know where I heard it. Probably some podcast you guys have done. <laughs> but when I am disrespectful to Derek, I'll apologize to him. And before I would, you know, when the kids were little, I'm like, we're whisper fighting in the kitchen mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm. you know, when they're sleeping. Hoping that nobody feels yes. that atmosphere. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'll go, oh, Derek, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I talked to you that way. It was really, you know, I missed the mark there. And then I'll turn. And if my daughter's in the room, I'll say, Lucy, I am so sorry. I disrespected your dad that way. Mm-hmm. That's not okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I will start to, you know, I've been having conversations with her on this is how, this is how you would want to treat a husband. This mm-hmm. is why, this is how, and I'm just actually bringing her in. And I have found it so, it's a game, it's been a game changer. Mm-hmm. It's been a game changer for us. Um, the level of accountability I feel, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the level yeah. of connection, mm-hmm. um, even her, you know, I've noticed now in my kids, when they apologize to one another, the I forgive you is so much quicker mm-hmm. because I think we're That's we're modeling good. that for, you know, my husband will say, I forgive you or vice versa, which yeah. unfortunately I don't have to forgive my husband as much as he has to forgive me. <laughs> I have one of those peaceful, peaceful, great ones. But yeah, we've just been, and we're just trying to show them the the fight, the Mm -hmm. fight every day of choosing each other. And I noticed too, I'm, uh, you know, (laughs) spicy, bossy, bratty (laughs) woman sometimes. And I'll kind of murmur under my breath or say something that frustrates me about dad in front of them. Mm. I, this kind of all came a revelation moment where, Derek went and did the the annoying habit, right, that he did. And I heard Lucy say exactly what I say about Mm. it. And it grieved me. Yeah. And I thought, she's only annoyed at that because I've displayed that. And then rather than beating myself up or hoping it goes away, I came to her in the moment and said, that's actually not annoying that dad does that. That's what makes daddy daddy. That's why I love Mm -hmm. him. And I'm sorry for every time I've made that seem you know, whatever. Mm. And Derek's like jaw dropped <laughs> on the, like what, you know, and my daughter, you know, is able to, you know, I don't know. That's what we're trying to do is just show her this is what it is. And I, I read some door too, you know, like don't, you want to disagree in front of your kids. I actually had coffee with a woman. I'll, I'll end here with a, at church. And she said, my parents were pastors. Mm-hmm. They never argued in front of us ever. Yeah. rich ministry family never argued. And then when all the kids were grown, they said, we're getting a divorce. We've not been in love for yeah. years. I've had mm-hmm. multiple oh affairs. Gosh. She got married and she said, because I never ever saw yeah. healthy conflict and resolution, I had no idea. They had three kids. Marriage crumbled 15 years later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now she's divorced, young, divorced. Mm-hmm. And she goes, "I, yeah. I, my expectation of marriage was that you don't ever fight because my parents never fought. Mm-hmm. And that's what she thought marriage should look like. And so I thought, oh my gosh. I that's hard. Yeah. That's tough. I mean, I don't do that. I forgive you thing in front of the kids. I should start that. <laughs> that's that's, a, I hey, like good that. Good advice for all of us. Yes. It is. You know, Ben, I don't know if it's the English humor or whatever, <laughs> but he's constantly teasing me. Yeah. And I just can't stand it sometimes. And I'm too <laughs> soft. And the kids are laughing. And I'm like, Seriously? Okay, guys. See, daddy wants me to do this. Ooh, you know, and I just get all crazy and they're just like 
dad, stop it. You know, yeah. like, you know, especially Judah. He's like, don't do that to mom. <laughs> and he's like on the floor, like Ben's like laughing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm learning, you know, I'm 15 years in too, just like Becky. But it's like, we ain't doing that. I forgive you and stuff in front of the kids. I need to start that. But I also need to really not be so sensitive, you know? Yeah. But they're seeing me. I'm like, you guys, daddy doesn't want me to do that. And, you know, yeah. like really obnoxious. And he's like, babe, come on. You oh. know, really immature, you know, so that's well, this where is we're the at. Gift of communication he's t- he's that you're trying to learn. <laughs> and they're looking at me. The kids, they're just like, oh, my gosh. Mom, I don't think he meant that. Like, it's oh not that God. serious, you know, and I'm mm-hmm. like, it is that serious. Like, how do you want me to cook this? You want me to put, you know, you cook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing real quick. We only, you know, uh, yeah, watching the time because I'm a talker. But the other day, <laughs> you know, I was doing the laundry. So I put his stuff on the bed and he comes in the room. <laughs> he says, I'm sorry, this is so funny. He goes, you know, I don't want my clothes on. There's dog hair every because we have two labs. Oh, dude. gosh. So, of course, here I go now. So, what do you want me to do while you're at the job? You don't want, I mean, how do you want me to do your clothes? <laughs> I mean, you don't want me to put them on. This is your bed. Where you want them to be at? <laughs> We're separating the clothes on the bed. So, I went on with the separation of the clothes at dinner, and the kids are just like, <laughs> Okay, this is awesome. We're just going to beat a dead horse and Ben yeah. is laughing. Anyways, yes. this is me. Patty, 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 patty. <laughs> oh Horrible. My gosh. Don't learn from me on this podcast. Oh. Keep your love on. <laughs> I mean, uh, those are. Oh my uh, gosh, I was so confused. I'm helping you out. You ain't here. Get me a laundry I'm sorting doing, table. I mean, seriously, ben. what do you want me to do with your clothes? <laughs> Hang them in the I mid-air. said, there is no dog here. It's I like mean, come on. You could always do your own clothes. Oh. He kind of like wants to, but I, I don't know. <laughs> well, there you go. Empowerment. He <laughs> does, but I'm trying to help out. Man, that set me off. I... <laughs> well, maybe that's a good Guys, thing. Guys, I'm in progress. <laughs> Tell your people on this show. Ruthie's in progress. <laughs> and she's here to learn We're today. We're going to do an apology lab for Ruthie. <laughs> but she's going to learn. How are you experiencing <laughs> Um, we have a really great show called the Kylo show and we talk through all these things so you can learn Lucy is a little behind <laughs> no, nah. she's got this I, I think yeah Becky brought up a good point about um hiding our conflict mm-hmm. you know and it's you're you're teasing yourself mm-hmm. but you're explaining you're displaying conflict or yeah. whatever or even the frustration yeah in but it. what happens in Christian homes is kind of what happens on social media. Let's just show you mm-hmm. all yep. the highlights of so my true. life. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and, we'll, and we ne- never talk about tough things. And yep. you always see, and then the, the 30 years later, we're, we're going to get a divorce or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of like um, Danny would, you know, we, ha- we need to ask for help. We need to invite people in. We, you know, we don't have to be the expert at everything. I don't have to be an e- expert bookkeeper. I get to hire someone or yeah. find a friend that's good at it if you can't afford to hire someone. But... Mm-hmm. There is, there is um, so much to say about inviting people in and asking for help and, and not being afraid to display, this is tough right now. We are working through something hard. Yeah. Obviously, we've had a heck of a year and a half with health, but having to just mm. wade through it, it's hard to watch your kids watch you struggle yes. sometimes. Yes. I have all adult children, now, of course, oh. but the... Um, what Danny would say, call the fire department when your house is on fire. Don't call the fire department when your house is burned down. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing we, no we one can do, do to help, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. Um, so if, if, you're, if you're needing a help in a certain area, don't hide it. Yeah. Shout it from the rooftops yeah, because you mm-hmm. there is help available. There are things you could be doing yeah. to strengthen your, your relationships. Yeah. Um, and Absolutely. don't – hiding it mm. is, the, is absolutely – not the thing to do. Yeah. Like mold grows in the dark, right? Yeah. So, so, true. so true. Pull it out. Yep. <laughs> Look at true. it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we, we've we actually found our kids. I mean, our kids are a little bit older than yours, Becky, but Addie is probably the best at if I get snippy or something with Ben um, because we've apologized in front of her and to her or them and we've made this practice, she'll actually say, Mom, you're not being very nice. Mm. And for her to have that courage mm-hmm. to give me feedback mm-hmm. of this is a different standard. We don't have that level for of disrespect. Sure. And that's what I want our kids to to mm-hmm. know and expect when they go into a relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've watched Delaney walk out 
good relationships and bad relationships yeah. and her to realize this is not a good relationship. Yeah. Right. This is a disrespectful relationship. Totally. And that's because she learned uh, that we're we're going to respect each other and speak with honor and mm. be loving towards one another. So I think that's uh, mm. just a really great thing to aim for. Yes. And, you know, maybe, Ruthie, we can help find you someone that does your laundry <laughs> yes. for Ben. Yeah. So you know, I get it. Just the dog the hair blanket, is annoying. Just flip the blanket upside down <clears> with just, the do dog hair toward the sheets. Right. Do his laundry, then flip <laughs> it then back Then flip over. it back, but it's not even there. That's <laughs> the thing, Sherry. I don't know what he's looking at. Maybe you know I'm what? immune to uh, it. You have a special love for your dogs. I do. So do. I think that that's the that's reality. That's the problem. That's the problem. Yep. All right. Well, let's do one more question. If we could have you leave uh, advice for women out there that are, whether they're married, not married, um, they're on a journey of being their best version of themselves and they want to be powerful women. So whatever it is that they choose, whether it's a career or stay-at-home mom, what advice would you give to women to just to embrace the beauty and wonder that God created in them? It goes back to a little bit about what Becky was saying about, you know, maybe not having kids yet, maybe not being married yet, <clears throat> excuse me, and feeling like I can't do those things because I have like dreams and visions and passions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that it, it brings just so much more fulfillment when you do have even those things in your life, whether you choose that or not, but follow your passions. That That's my biggest thing mm -hmm. it, because it does create a lot of fulfillment in my life in particular, you know, um, I was listening to Becky about that and I actually started my little blogging thing mm -hmm. when I had no money and no nothing, but I, I did the thrifting because it made me happy. And I had three little kids, mm -hmm. I was married, but I did that because that's all I could do in that mm -hmm. moment. And then it flourished into something right. else. Right. But my biggest advice is if you have a passion mm -hmm. or a dream, run after it, like mm -hmm. run after it. And obviously don't make it come before any of those things. Yeah. But I think that's a huge part of being fulfilled. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. No, 100%. I think I would say to any young or any woman out there listening to embrace, um, if you, I think just too, it's so relevant in today's culture of mm -hmm. social media in comparison and something that has been a, a really big hurdle for me to overcome, and I think I'm still in the process, is if you're going to embrace what God's called you to do, mm -hmm. you have to like unembrace what God has called everyone else to do. <laughs> Absolutely. I and I that. think Ooh, we're just good. really Thank hung you. up on what everyone mm -hmm. else around us is doing. And and it just takes our foot. And we know all these things, you know, mm -hmm. like comparison robs you of joy and mm -hmm. all the things. But really, I think we know these things, but we're not actually practicing mm -hmm. it. We're not yeah. actually stopping, you know, stop the scroll, stop the obsession mm -hmm. and ask, really ask the Lord, what is it that he's called you to do? And um, I found the most freedom in health when I'm able to embrace that my life looks very different. And mm -hmm. I have yet to find a woman who's doing what I'm doing exactly. And I've just had to go, okay, that doesn't mean I'm doing it wrong. It mm -hmm. means God's called me to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And first, I've just spent so many years trying to find who is doing exactly what I'm right. doing so I can yeah. model, <laughs> so I yeah. can find mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. And finally, yeah. finally, the Lord's like, I have asked you to do something that I've not asked anyone else to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's actually the case with all of us. You're not going to find someone mm -hmm. doing exactly yeah. what you're called to do. And I think a lot of women are actually sacrificing in, in their calling and their mission because they are obsessed over other people's callings and missions. Whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think we've really got to stop That's that. That's good. So I had that conversation with someone this weekend when we were doing a marriage conference and they asked me all this. I said, the best thing that I can do is serve the Lord with what he's asked me to do mm -hmm. and trust that he's going to take care of all the things that I care so deeply about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And once I step out of that calling and I step out of that favor, that's when things become problematic. Yeah which means I'm getting distracted by the things that I shouldn't be comparing my life to mm -hmm. or looking for. Um, it's great. I mean, people know, like I talk to women all the time. They know more about other people's lives yeah. than they do their own kids under their nose. Yeah. They know more about the vacation that their favorite mm -hmm. blogger took so true. than they do about their own finances. Like, yeah. well, I could never go to so-and-so because so-and-so went to such. I'm like, what? You are. <laughs> Who cares? Yes. Yeah. So do what's in front of you. Do what you're called yeah. to do and, and, yeah. and yeah, embrace that. I, I The... The good thing is you can have dreams and vision of, for your life and things you're interested in without being employed 
by yeah. that thing. So, yeah. mm-hmm. so it's, it's kind example. of like, hey, if, you, if you're a stay-at-home mom and you, you know, you're handing out crackers and wiping noses all day, you can still do an online course on photography yeah. or mm-hmm. something. You find something that you're interested in because the, I know this is hard to imagine, but your kids are going to grow up. They're going <laughs> to true. go away and be adults and all those things. And then have you developed yourself? while they were growing have you developed that dream in your life so that when you're when you have more time yeah. mm-hmm. you can go do that passion it doesn't have you don't have to have money right. yeah. you don't have to have a career you have time you have energy Ruthie's and a develop case yourself study for that. I mm-hmm. mean, she exactly. really is. She, yeah. she made that point. Yeah. 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 I think you should make sure that you <clears throat> love yourself no That's matter what good, season Brett. that you're in. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, your kids are going to leave. Your your season is serving your family, having a job, or serving your family, staying at home. But if you don't love yourself in that season and you don't develop that, then you're going to be really sad at the this end This is of, a big thing. Yeah. 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 That's a so big then, deal. It is. Such a good word. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Awesome, ladies. Thank you for joining us. Thanks That's for the it. We're done talking. We're done talking. <laughs> Turn we'll have it. Have you back. <laughs> Encore. After hours. Keep it rolling. Yes. I know. We, we could have a lot of fun, no doubt. But as always, thank you so much for listening to The Kyla Show. And remember, the whole healthy families are going to save the world. Ladies, we believe in you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Never miss an episode of The Kyla Show by subscribing to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch us on the Loving on Purpose YouTube channel. Don't forget to submit your questions and testimonies to thekyloshow.com. The Kyla Show is produced by Ali Armading, co-produced by Ashley Beck and Anna Hill, and show promoter Christian Zamora. Don't forget, whole healthy families are going to save the world.